Hey everybody, back at you again. Brad Linder here for a nice Saturday evening. Uh, had some meetings run over today, so uh, doing this one kind of late, but uh, it's all good. We're here and whatnot. I'm going to share this with the page real fast so that everybody can see and share it over on the channel. And uh, what I've got for you tonight is, hey Patrick, thanks for joining me, man. Uh, Battle Cat. I know this looks a little scratchy, but I always draw underneath. So I put in uh, the cat head, as you can see, hopefully. I put in the cat head underneath first um, so that I could put the mask on top. And it, he's going to have the classic mask uh, of the cat, but I'm going to leave the body pretty extract because uh, – extract? <laughs> abstract because of the fact that I want to put in the stripes and leave it open for color so it has an animated look to it. Um, going to be tinkering around with this armor pretty quick as we go through this, but uh, yeah, for the most part, it's going to look like an animated uh, image of sorts. Now, the reason I did this as a close-up is because I am working on the other two pieces, but um, the the Castle Grey Skull and the Snake Mountain I do have both those pieces underway for the He-Man and Skeletor uh, mirror duo that I'm doing for finishing up this particular subset. I just wanted to get this one out of the way because I didn't add in um, a couple of the characters that people re were requesting, and I, I just kind of wanted to touch base and make that up a little bit with uh, adding Battle Cat because he was a, a specific special request. And uh, with this one being so late, I didn't want to do just a generic character, you know, like one of the other masters. I just wanted, I wanted to get something that was unique as a primary cast member. But I didn't uh, feel comfortable getting into a, a Tila or a um, Evil Inn or one of the major, you know, female characters that we would see. I wanted to do something just a little bit different and more diverse. And uh, this also gave me an opportunity to figure out what type of cat he actually was based on. And none of the research that I found, and if you guys know where to find it, awesome, let me know. But as I did the research on the character, which I've been doing research on all of them to make sure where I could get the sources and stuff, um, it's interesting to find out that they didn't say what he was based on. It was a little bit of, uh, a, little bit of um, a tiger, a little bit of a lion. And a lot of prehistoric stuff, and then a lot of fantasy. You know, just a lot of, like, giant wolves and giant cats and things like that um, when they designed these characters. And they didn't put quite the uh, the effort and thought into it that I thought they did with a lot of these designs. They uh, wanted them to be more piecemealed so it would look more fantasy um, for the long run for the series. And I, I thought that was really cool that they did that, but in hindsight, you know... You never know what kind of animal this really is, so it's kind of hard to base the anatomy underneath. But I, I went with a little bit of, I went with a tiger design for anatomy, but I went with a lion scale. And hopefully that's going to bring up, I mean, you can see his nose right in here, you know, where uh, it has that kind of look and feel to it. And I'm hoping that it translates. But uh, we'll see as the finished product comes along and comes out. However getting us started and getting us moving along here, this is going to be really cool because uh, he's got this kind of, uh, it's supposed to be a cringed up look, but I, I want to say it's more of a bird type beak on the end of this thing. And it's supposed to be a talon type of deal, but uh, based on um, the Castle Grey Skull and, and Sorceress Armor. And I thought that was kind of interesting that they were going to say that. I guess kind of is going to be the word of the night tonight. Sorry about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting look overall. I think it's going to be pretty clean and fun. So I'm having a blast with it. And the reason to answer the question, I got I got private message already about um, why I was so on and long tonight, if I was going to be uh, on and all that. And yes, I'm here. You know, um, I had a meeting and it ran over, and uh, that was the problem. But uh, it wasn't a problem for me. It was just that, you know, the client needed me, but that was uh, uh, timing for the show. It was a little bit of a problem. But, uh, yeah, I went on early, 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 and then he decided that he needed more help. So 
uh, which was uh, good for business, but bad for timing. But I'm still here for you guys. I'm not going to uh, miss just yet. Still going on. This is uh, day number 180. Uh, this is card number 185. So that makes it day 180. What? Yeah, that's that's this is day. This is card 185. So that's going to make it um, something along the lines of uh, between 87, 88, right around in there for days. 188. Jeez. But. Uh, I've been doing this consecutively, and I'm not missing yet. So we're going to keep hanging on with it. As long as you guys keep showing up and keep enjoying the cards, I'm going to keep doing them, like I said. But uh, that's where we're at right now. So I was trying to – sorry for the pause. In uh, speaking there, I just didn't want to dig into that card if it was going to catch. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I didn't want that to rip up. That would be horrible. But uh, I'm going to cut in these eye covers here. In the mask, he is uh, always ticked off. And the reason for that is because they slope over the eyes like this. And then it blocks for the shield, which crests over his head. Because there's multiple parts to this helmet, and it doesn't always show up. In various shots, it shows up here and there. But it's got kind of a triangular shape to it because it goes down down this way under his chin where it's open, and then it goes back up this way to a crown. And a lot of people think it rounds out. And the newer one that just has this jaw design and this flat spiked, uh, this, this flat head cover with a spiked horn on it, which is right there, uh, that new design for the for the revamp that Cartoon Network did, that has a facial fee. Uh, a facial fitting that is shaped shaped like a cat in feature. So, you know, I mean, it's got the nose and all that on it, which I'm not going to do because I like the classic look, and that's what I'm doing for these. But um, that's where it's at right now. So I'm going to cut that in real quick. But, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that this is the classic look, not the new one from the Cartoon Network that's a couple years old now. Uh, this is the classic He-Man design. And I really, really, really love this character. I always thought Cringer was, pardon the pun, but I thought Cringer was always the underdog. You know, I mean, even more so than Adam. Uh, I thought Cringer was definitely someone that got, it was a fish out of water story for Adam coming, you know, of age. Kind of like lion -O coming of age in the Thundercats. And uh, the, uh, the real fish out of water was this guy right here. Because he got stuck in the middle of it and didn't even want to be. He was just stuck there, and Adam needed something to go with him for, you know, transportation and an ally in battle. So, Battle Cat, there you are. Which I always found that to be really, really cool. Now I'm gonna start drawing in some of this, uh, some of this cat anatomy here. So we can see his mouth and his jaw and all that. And I was going to put in uh, the saber tooth type fangs, which the original did have. But the funny thing is, is when he changed, he didn't have it. Uh, when he was Cringer, he had the, the teeth sticking out the side of his mouth. But when he was uh, in Battle Cat form, he grew so big, they actually leveled out. And he had that one snaggle tooth thing going on. But that's that's where that was uh, originally from. He was a uh, saber tooth tiger, and like I said, a little research showed that they based him off a little bit of everything. So it wasn't exactly a science to it. They just kind of hodgepodge him together to say, okay, now we've got him, and this, you know, he's going to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and and, and for an artist like me trying to figure out correct anatomy for him and whatnot, it, it was a, a little bit of a mess is what it ended up being. So it turned me into cringer. But, um, you know, uh, that that's par for course. It, it is what it is because it's fantasy, and I accept that, and I'm okay with it. 
and uh, this is where the rubber meets the road here, and I just kind of, like I said, did exactly what they did. So Now, I'm giving him kind of a lip here. A lot of people don't do that, but I'm giving him a little bit of a lip so that he can have uh, the edge of the mouth here and come down and around and give him a little bit of a gum line inside of here so that whenever it comes underneath it's got a lip and so that I could shadow this jaw just a little without blacking the whole thing out and making it look weird because now I can go up on that tongue just a little on that side and make those teeth pop out a little bit more I like it I like it but uh, anyway now I'm gonna come down here underneath and if you've ever seen this, this is uh, cats do have a lip. They have a flat lip. Um, that that's going to be pretty, pretty much it right there. Uh, they don't have a heavy lip. They have kind of a flat lip that sticks out a little bit like a muppet. It's just a ridge. So <laughs> that's where we're at. That's what we've got. That's what we've got. But I'm going to cut in. This, uh, for lack of a better term, this beard. Because that's what he's got going on here. I'll make it kind of choppy because of the fact that he's massive. I'll bring down the sidelines of the jaws here. I don't want him to look weird, you know, like... Um, you know, like it's just gone kind of thing. Because that's not the way it is. And we'll put in the top part of that upper lip edge so we can see that going down from underneath where he's snarling. And then I'll wrap out this gum a little bit so you can see the top of his jaw. There we go. Now, I don't want this to look like a spare t or a stray tooth, so I'm going to blacken that in a little bit. Wow. Okay, cool. And right back there, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to shadow out the old esophagus. Just a little. But when a cat roars, it tends to raise up its tongue, so you won't see very far back there. Just to let you know. That, that's a, a basic anatomy thing. Just... Keep that in mind. Some of that hair come off the edge of this right here. And then we'll start refining this a little bit more. So I know this one's kind of sketchy because it's so late, but because um, it's like, I don't know, uh, something like 9 o'clock for me, like 10 till, something like that. I'm not normally on this late. But I just want to make sure that you guys get to see the follow-up code. And also have, like I said, He-Man and um, going to have He-Man and Skeletor doing those uh, those portraits standing in front of the uh, Snake Mountain and uh, Snake Mountain and uh, Castle Grishel. Thank you very much. Anyway. Now I'm going to go in and put some of these details in here, some of this line work, into uh, this to pop this up. Now I know this could have been done a lot, but like I said, it could have been done a lot better. But uh, for the basic need of getting it on board to keep track for everybody, I wanted to uh, make it in the face and very simple. It's not one of my better compositions, I, I have to unfortunately say, but but I'm going to make up for it with He-Man. I'm going to make up for it. I'm going to make up for it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm so excited about everything going on. Uh, this coming week is going to be just hectic, hectic, hectic. It's going to be a blast. It's like, which is it? Is it going to be hectic or is it going to be a blast? 
For me, it's going to be a blast. For you, I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be a good week. I hope. I wish you well. Kind of pop that out a little bit. Trying something a little new with the reflective armor design. See how that works. I don't want him to get goofed up though, because he because you can go real crazy with this, and if you're not careful, it won't look like metal; it'll look like camouflage. No, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I really don't. <laughs> So, I'm just saying, don't go crazy with it, because then, like I said, it'll look all scratched up, and it'll look more like camouflage than it will armor. Like right over here, where this curve is, this is going to be cool. So, you put in a little black spot to define the curve, and then you go right down underneath, and you put in kind of this little squiggle right here, and then... Just like that. I'm going to block that off. And we're going to put some lines through this to show a curve. Like that. Then we're going to black this spot out. And before you know it, ta-da! Now some people get real fancy with this stuff. And are way better at it than I am. But... This isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. I'm going to put kind of a divot right here because I want to show where that pops up to show a true ridge in the armor. And I wouldn't normally do it like this, but I'm going to anyway. Proper protocol is to map that stuff out before you go drawing it like this. But again, I'm going to put just a little bit of a ridge on there. Just to pop it up. Nothing more, nothing less. Just, just to pop it out, just a little. And again, on this side, I'm going to put it up this way. With this armament. And because the light's hitting different, because my light source is coming in from this direction which is why you have the hard shadow on the end of the nose because it's coming in up high across that way and that's why it's going right through here and you've got it all on this side and across here just a little bit of a curve on the highlight uh, to match up the rest of the, nerve, the nose that goes around for the beak there and that's why nothing over here because when it's colored in it'll be dark and most people will go in and do the cross hatching or the line work right up under here um, you know matter of fact I think I'll do a little bit of that right now just to define that. Just a little. Like that. On that one side. But like I said, I don't want to feather this up. I want to keep it pretty simple. And fairly clean. Because the underwork is already there. And I don't have to do uh, too much to it. And when it's inked up, it'll be really clean. All that gray will be out of there, so it'll be nice. I don't mind putting in a, a, fine, a finer detailed work in it sometimes. But I don't want to go overkill. And that's a big thing with this, is you can go overkill with this armor and then it looks weird. Like on this side right here where the light hits, there's a divot where his nose is supposed to be and it cringes up just a little bit so you get this kind of thing going on and then right here same thing right underneath, right underneath the eye right there beside actually beside the eye it'll be that way because the lights coming down this way this will tip under just a little bit 
and divide that ridge like that. Now what will end up happening is, is this will darken out and it will look like it's got that, uh, that raised brow look and crunched right up underneath the edge of that plate. So let's see what we can do with that. But I have to be careful, though, because I don't want this to look like his eyes. Because uh, that's a big problem they had in the cartoon, is they would animate it to where it – or they would draw it, matter of fact. They wouldn't animate it. They would draw it to where his eyes were the actual mask. And it was so big, and it never looked right underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in this kind of thing and do the Batman black eye bit so he looks kind of like he's got an eyelid under there. which helps out a lot. That way it looks like he's got eyes underneath the mask instead of being right on top. And the way you do that is you blacken it down just a little to make it look like it's separate from the mask. There you go. Bing. All right, cool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and detail this out a little bit more. And then we will call it a day. And I don't, like I said, I don't know why they did that uh, with the mask, but it's got kind of an eagle face rather than, you know, the beak and whatnot instead of the look of a cat like the revamp had. I really like the armor for the revamp. It was nice. It was a good set. He actually looks like a cat in that regard. I found a lot of fans that don't like the new cartoon. and they, it, it, it was weird. I, I don't understand why they didn't like it. But I respect the fact that they didn't like it. It's just it was weird that it... Because it, was, it wasn't like the Thundercats reboot. It was the same thing. You know, I mean, it was the same exact cartoon. I really enjoyed it. But I geek out on that stuff, too, though. Because I was one of the people that watched, watched it when it came on as a... Uh, a summer filler that year it came out because it wasn't even supposed to be more than the special the pilot and they ended up bringing it to life for uh, I think I think there's 12 episodes in that something like that unfortunately it didn't get renewed because it was an off-season filler show and Thundercats took its spot and it didn't get to go anywhere else So that was a kind of a bummer, but it was a great show for what it was. Let's see here. Drawing in the horns. keeps anything from getting into his face or up on his head, which is cool. I like the idea of that. Giving him double-sided uh, shadows here just to show the curve on his head. Because that gives it the look that it curves like it should, which is a dome type of effect. Because now what I can do is come up this way and make that really pop out. Or that light contrast on the other side. Like a this. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. Let's see, we got the light coming down from this way, so we got a shadow over here. So now what I can do is I can come in and put in that kind of ripple light effect like we did over there. Bring up some of that armor. Go a little old school right there with the bubbles. And then on this side, what I'll do is I'll come in and line it out. Where we have a horn from the shadow. Yes, I reversed that on purpose to be funny. <laughs> it's the shadow of the horn. Just just for everybody, me screwing around on the weekend, relax. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not... <laughs> I haven't lost my marbles. Not yet. Not yet. No. Just horsing around. <laughs> People be YouTubing me, posting... Just that snippet. He sent it backwards. <laughs> He's lost it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to put in just a little bit of a ridge here because this is inset. So by putting in that little bit of a shadow, it's going to show the weight on the bottom like that. Boom. There we go. It pops it right out. So we'll get that done. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow over here too because I want this to run over just a little to where it shows some of that running off. And a lot of people would be wondering where the, why the shadow for the horn, if the light's coming down this way, why doesn't this, the horn reflect down here? The thing is, though, it'll come down, instead of it coming over here, off this way straight out like you know this it'll go down like this so what you'll get is you'll get a little bit of a a bubble right down here when I'm done it'll put a, a little bit of an offshoot dark circle um, type of effect right here which means it'll put a black spot ding, right down here it'll put a hard edge right there because what will happen is the light's still hitting the sh the metal from this side so you're going to have the line to work but this will reflect a shadow in that fine line and it'll curve and pinch it down so it kind of takes the point that stands up like this and flattens it out right it's like turning a dime sideways okay because the point of this is actually reflecting right there from the way the light goes so just so you know and because this is going to be a different angle we're going to want to go from two sides and we're going to cross hatch right here so we go from here this way about halfway up like that and then we'll turn it this way where you guys can see it and then what I'll do is I'll start cross hatching this other direction and because there's more light coming down this way it'll be more lines coming this way because the shadow will be harder from that direction if that makes sense and then the light coming this way it'll be broader strokes so because there won't be as much um, shadowing it's weird how light and shadow work like that it's just crazy crazy stuff man it'll mess with your head a lot of artists have been broken because of that you'll find them whining and drooling in the corner the shadow messed with me, man. The shadow. It's the shadow. You've read too many comic books. Not that shadow. Sorry. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, that, that'll be hilarious. <laughs> the shadow knows. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of add in this little bit of a reflective surface here that way 
we can see a little bit of light going on. Not as much as the other side. Yes, my big hands are in the way. Sorry about that. Um, the reason for that is because of the fact that I want to get the shadow down without the card rippling or tearing. It does us no good if the card buckles. Okay. Wow. All right. A little accent point right there. Now, because this is going to be the underside, I'm going to put it down this direction. I think I'm going to draw these straight down. I thought I was going to slant them so it would give it a, a little bit more dynamic, but a little bit more dynamic dynamic edge, excuse me. But uh, what ends up happening is I don't want to make it bend instead. Because then it'll parallel this one, and it'll be weird looking. So what I wanted to do, come out like this. Like that. Now, I know this is getting deeply detailed here with this one. I mean, I'm just detailing the heck out of this thing. But the reason, like I said before that, is because I wanted to give something... A little different than I normally do. So there you have it. And when I, like I said, once this is all inked up and all this gray is out of here. This will really pop. We'll leave that like that. You guys have to tell me which one you like more. Do you? Do you prefer uh, Battle Cat or do you prefer Cringer? I'm a Battle Cat fan myself. But, you know, diversity is a good thing. If we all like the same things, we wouldn't have auctions. So, make this hair pop up just a little bit. And when I ink it, I'll wait till I ink it to draw in those stripes. So that if I do any more feathering or whatever with the hair, I don't um, mess it up. But there is the Battle Cat armor, helmet, face, and chest to hold us over till tomorrow. Make these teeth a little more prominent. Most people like to feather these out to where they don't exist. You know, they're white shells. And I don't like to do that. I like the teeth to show up. I like them to have some depth to them. So, but anyway, this is where I will put in right here on the face. I will put in that stripe. I will put in a matching stripe over here. To start him off and then I'll put in the proper tiger stripes there on the the uh, arms the front legs as it were when I ink it and we will call that one done for now so hope you dig it thanks for hanging out with me so late in the evening and I'll talk to you guys later